What's up, y'all? I am Marcus, also known as Ian B, and welcome back to From the Dark. Today, we are heading into Lost Isolith. This is... We're just right at the end. We're just right at the end, and I just noticed some... No, never mind. I thought I noticed something, but that's actually... Uh, I was watching the lava, the lava flow down like that, and I was wondering if it just cooled this, this way, but these are actually... This is wood. This is like arch tree, I guess. It's arch tree roots. Alright, I am wearing the orange charred ring. So we can walk on this lava. Just kind of as a reminder. It's no issue for us, but... If you don't have the orange charred ring, you can't really walk on that so easily. This part of the game is pretty much the least finished. Lost Isolith. And it, it really feels like the least finished. You got all these dinosaur butts just crowding around here. Uh, it, they really just copy and pasted, pa copy and pasted, copy pasted this enemy over and over and over down here, and, and they're not, it's, it's really boring. If I remember correctly though, these guys don't respawn, so if we wanted to kill them, which it's kind of a waste of time, but, ooh, you move faster than I remember. Ooh. Oh, I missed. <laughs> oh god we're dead it's not worth fighting these guys at all as you can pretty much clearly tell there I uh, don't think they even drop anything you can kind of snipe them from afar if you want, you can fight them close. Like, you can fight these guys, but it's just completely fucking pointless. Like I said, unfortunately, Isleth is just the least uh, complete part of the game. It just seems like they ran out of time to finish and just kind of rushed it, and it didn't turn out so well. Now, I guess what they were going for with the dinosaur stuff, like... I don't, I'm not going to make any excuses for them here, it's just not very good, but I guess what they were going for is that you were supposed to sneak and like run and like, you're being chased by a horde of dinosaur butts or dragon butts, however you want to look at it. Um, but it just doesn't really play out to be very fun. One thing I'll point out though, about the setting, the world design here, is that, um, we are inside a giant lava dome. Or... Well, I mean, there's lava inside the dome, but we're inside this giant dome shape. You can see here. The way it tilts up like that. Um, you can actually see this from the Demon Ruins. That's actually that large dome that you see there. Is the city of Lost Isleth. And if you look here, at, this is the edge of the dome, and it's got this break right here where the root has gone through so the root has grown through and broken the city to allow us in and then there's the highway up above that actually leads to the daughter of chaos shortcut which i'll show it to you guys here uh i'm not gonna fuck with the dinosaur butts because fuck it man <laughs> it's just uh 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 um, I don't recall, I, I know, I remember on the original Japanese version I killed, like, the first one, and then managed to run through the rest. Um, when I play the Japanese version, and do the, the JP version highlights and translations and stuff like that, we'll, we'll have a look at how they aggro. If I recall correctly, also, uh, the towers are safe spots. Don't rightly remember. Don't rightly remember. Pretty cool that we're kind of underneath the highway with the Titanite Demon above. 
And yes, the bloom effect is out of fucking hand in Isolith. Don't worry, we won't be here particularly long. But yeah, you both you basically just have these kind of the it it's the the model that they use for the lower half of the undead dragon, but it is this actually like broken off pieces of undead dragons or are these supposed to represent demons? I wouldn't read too much into it either way because this just isn't incomplete. <laughs> Which sucks too because the overall design of the area like this inside this dome with the lava c constantly going down the roots everywhere kind of the architecture uh, this is actually based on real life architecture uh, Chris Lockie's my man he's he's the most recent one to send me but I've had people send me pictures and videos of uh, it's somewhere in Southeast Asia I can't remember where it is uh, but I've had people send me pictures and videos of the place that this is actually based on uh, in the past this is something that they've done a lot they did a lot in Dark Souls um, in interviews Miyazaki-san said you know, in Demon Souls, it was kind of an, a little bit older age, but in Dark Souls, it's it's kind of at the point where they can use more modern architecture as a base for things. Uh, these guys do have friendly fire with each other, though. That's one thing. Um, but yeah. So a lot of the settings, and this is something that it's kind of, I don't know, it's good and bad. Using real life places as reference means that they get a lot of little details built into the world that you would not anticipate and allows them to have a quick development time too because they don't have to design everything from scratch. You know, they got reference photos and whatnot that they can use. But on the flip side of that, the downside is that when people actually find the places that they base the locations on, when they find them in real life, you know, it's not really... It, it can break your immersion a bit, I guess I should say. Let's see, that's... Uh, yeah, there's treasure over there. If I remember right, I always wondered what this why they let you come up on this top part of this tower but there's actually treasure over there and I can't remember if we're safe on this tower or not we might as well get the bonfire before we find out yes bonfire yes bonfire I said it I know there's gonna be someone out there who doesn't know about this and it's gonna blow their fucking mind because there is indeed a hidden bonfire down hey buddy what are you doing oh I missed I missed again How'd it work? Right here. <laughs> it's kind of... It's, if you don't know about this bonfire, it makes Bed of Chaos so much more annoying. It makes Bed of Chaos just the fucking devil. I can't remember which one of these. Oh, there he is. All right. Now let's get up here and snipe a couple of these dino butts and see if we can get them to hit each other just so we can show it off. Like I said, personally, I have zero interest in fighting these things. Less than zero. But, uh... Hmm. Twin humanities. Is that a female corpse? Or is that another man? Looks like a male corpse. Huh, I did not know about that one. Uh, also, you can see the, the crumbled ruins. Like, it appears that this, this ziggurat or this tower here was once actually connected to the main, uh, I don't know, I'll call it a palace, the main part of the city where the Witch of Isleth resides. And there's the highway again. Really, really fucking cool area design, but the enemies and like the gameplay of this this part is just. Ugh. Let's see. Can you do? Any, can you fuck with us at all up here? You can't do anything at all with us up here. Okay, so we can just snipe from here, and he can't do anything. Or can he? Maybe he can. 
maybe he can't. Hey, you. Get involved. Attack each other. Do my bidding. To see if I can demonstrate it. More or less, I'm guessing this was the intended way to actually deal with these dudes. The other one dead already? Oh, there he is. You're gone. You're gone. So, yeah. They don't really drop anything. You get some souls for it, but... Worth it? I can't really say it's worth it. I cannot really say it's worth it. But we will go over here and grab this item, so... Just so I can say we did. This is actually, if I remember right, it's it's somewhat of a, a unique item. It's not completely unique. There's one more that I actually missed earlier in um, Seath's in, in Duke's Archives, which I'll go back and pick it up in a recap episode, I guess. But there's a Divine Blessing. Another Divine Blessing. Oh, actually, I thought there was a Soul of a Great Hero over here. Eh, it's somewhere around. Two of the gods' followers down here, perhaps. There we go. I don't remember where that solo great hero is. Is it all the way off over there? Ah, fuck if I know. I'm not gonna mess with it. Instead. We're going to get out of this over-bloom nightmare that we're in. If you walk in here, you can go up this route. Miyazaki san even said, like, he, he kind of always has the, the, the feeling that Southeast Asia always, the architecture always gives him a chaotic feeling. And so, that's where this inspiration to have the pyromancers and the flame of chaos and all that be in this, have this sort of architecture for this area. Makes sense. You're not alive, but you are. Were. <laughs> Notice they still do float, so... Just looks like he's saying, get in my belly. Just kind of having a look, having a poke about. It's possible that the, uh, actually I would say probable that the bed of chaos is what caused these roots to grow through the city. And the city is basically destroyed at this point. So originally, the city wouldn't have had these roots growing all over it. I said arch trees earlier, but maybe not arch trees. Arch trees are described as being partially stone. Like if you if you think of the dragons as being some sort of like the everlasting dragons are some sort of like kind of animal-ish stone life form, then I would guess the arch trees would be the plant version. Like, they're as much mineral as they are living thing. These enemies, once again, completely not threatening at all.
I mean, you, you basically just have to screw up to get killed by one of these. Which, you know, I screw up. I do. I make mistakes. Everybody make mistakes, man. <clears throat> and now we get to see one of... We can find these items up here, but this is the other major enemy that's going to feature in this area. Fucked up looking little life form. Chaotic indeed. Covered in eyeballs too. Once again, I guess it's kind of a, a concept that they keep coming back to. Alright, this next area. You can see a pyromancer over there. Uh... I don't think it's Quailana of Izalith. A lot of people through the years have thought that this was Quailana because she wears the clothes that, as we saw last time, are supposed to be Quailanas, right? I think Quailana, well, as a matter of fact, I know that Quailana and all of her sisters wore the same outfit. Like, you can see it in, the, in the, the opening movie, in the intro. That's part of the reason why I don't really necessarily think that that's actually Quailana's corpse. Even though this says, worn by the witch Quailana of Isleth, um, I think that it doesn't, it's not necessarily hers. Uh, I'll check the, that's another thing that I've got on my list of things to check when we uh, look at the Japanese version of the game and look at the original text. But yeah, this pyromancer is hostile. Koilana actually wants us to defeat the Bed of Chaos, but this Pyromancer is actually hostile to us. This Daughter of Chaos is. So, I don't really think this is Koilana. I don't think that the corpse is Koilana. I think Koilana is in the swamp. I think it's three separate sisters. Now, one thing, we're going to get invaded here by uh, the Dark Wraith Kirk. If we just ran up there, we would have to deal with Kirk and her at the same time. But there's another way. A better way. Well, at least a different way. And that's to just kind of dick around a little bit and we'll get Kirk to spawn. And come chase us down. And we can deal with Kirk without having to deal with... Uh, the witch at the same time. Soul of a hero. The inside of the dome. Interesting that it seems like the dome could have been formed like by cooling cooling magma or what have you, you know? Like I wonder if they had some sort of way to mold it or what. Like I I don't know. I don't know. Oh, right. I forgot to hop down and get this one. No! Whew. Rare Ring of Sacrifice. Another fucking connection with Velka. Was this a follower of Velka? Or just someone who had one of her rings? The world will never know. See these demons. Demonic statues starting to. Ooh, baby, a triple. Starting to congregate around. Guess I didn't go far enough forward to trigger Kirk. Maybe the stairs might be. After you get close enough, it takes a, a second still. Let's see if this triggers it. Yep, here we go. 
No, Kirk will come play. Classic Kirk. Oh, hey. Ooh. Got Kirk after that back step. That, that, ooh, that hurt. And that completes Kirk's side quest. That's three kills on Kirk. And uh, we'll find the corpse here in just a bit. But now... Chaos Firestorm. Chaos Fire Whip. Chaos, Chaos, Chaos. <laughs> Some serious firepower there, baby. And there we get an Izalith Catalyst. If you remember before, we got uh, the Demon Catalyst, what was it called? Yeah, we got the Demon's Catalyst that, that told us that uh, the Fire Sage was the first demon in the last master of the original Fire Arts. Now we've got the Izalith Catalyst, Catalyst of the Witch of Izalith long ago, when her daughters were still flame witches, before they were engulfed by the Chaos Flame. Before the birth of pyromancy, their wands were mediums for sorcery, but knowledge of this flame sorcery has long since vanished. The original fire arts were actually a form of sorcery. Which, another fascinating point is that Seath the Scaleless is the grandfather of sorcery, but I think his, his sorcery and the flame sorceries of Izalith were separate. I, I think... Obviously, they're both forms of sorcery, but I don't think he had anything to do with their development. That's just a guess, but... Ah! Oh! Oh! And one more of you dudes. Alright. <clears throat> Now this way leads back to the Daughter of Chaos. This is where we rescued slash killed Solaire last time. There's a Titanite Demon, a very strong Titanite Demon right over there. But this is the way back to that shortcut. Probably the main way in and out of the city from the beginning. Uh, the way that we came into the city was obviously like the dome had crumbled. It wasn't originally a way to way to get through. So after the, the Flame of Chaos took over and fucking roots started growing all over the place, um, that opened up. Alright, here we go. Let me try not to mess this up. We have kind of a big event here. See Ziegmeier right across the way. And then down below... Four of these bad boys. Four of those bad boys. Let me swap away from this and go to our rusted iron ring. And another thing I want to do, I want to I want to try to snipe a couple of these dudes from down here, from or from, rather from up here. I do not want to kill them all because it will break Ziegmeier's event, or rather, it'll give us an ending that we're not wanting to Ziegmeier's event. Three arrows each is doing the job. Get around here and get two shots on you. One, two, one, two, three. All right, so there's one left. He's very weakened. Hmm. 
you gonna come down here? No, you're gonna just hang out up there, aren't you? Well, hell are you. I love the way that they actually slipped an in, slipped an environmental detail that you can't you can't visibly see in there. Talking about the warmth, like obviously we can see the molten lava or magma, whichever. A lot of people are saying uh, I've had a couple of geologists saying it's probably should be considered lava. Anyway, that's beside the point. We can see it. We know that's hot, but he's like he's he's basically telling us something that we we can't feel, but that it's actually very warm in this dome. I just, I was like that. I thought that was a very subtle detail. You can't, it's something you can't experience visually, something you can't experience orally. You can't actually feel what the characters are feeling in the game. He's telling you it's warm. I, I really like that little detail. But, on to bigger, bigger things. Um, Fred, I have an idea. A good one, really. I will rush this dire feeling and you can slip away in the confusion. Please, Fred. I owe you much more than this. By the honor of the Knights of Katarina, allow me to assist you. And now, I go. Don't be slow. Add up, boy, Siegmeier. Atta boy, Zeke, bro. Uh oh. I think I'll. Oh, don't you worry. Round below me is my pillow. I'll recover. Okay. All right. Ziegmeier survived, and he didn't even take any damage. This is very good. Get some red titanite chunks. Soul of a brave warrior. Green titanite shards. Uh, if you kill those enemies and don't let him do it, you get one ending. Uh, if he takes too much damage during the fight, you get another ending for his quest line. Uh, and if you let him take care of it and he doesn't take too much damage, then you get kind of the final ending to his his quest line. I think there was a red titanite slab down there that I have missed. Hold on, let me equip some moss. There we go. We have plenty. I don't need to worry about it. So now, um, we should be able to get the uh, quote-unquote good or true ending of his quest line. This leads us back up out of here. So if we just wanted to leave, we could come this way, but we want treasure, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Try to remember how to get up to that. Let's see. 
I absolutely don't remember it all. Fuck. I hate it when my memory fails me like this. Don't think you can jump to it. Or rather, maybe you can jump to it, but I don't think you're supposed to jump to it. Looks like you should be able to get to it from above. God damn it, I don't remember how to get up there. <laughs> Forget about it. Forget about it, people. Let me hop back down here, though. Make sure I've explored this properly. This was a dead end, right? No, you can go around here. And there we go. <laughs> That's what it was. Red tight. All that for red tight night chunk. There should be a slab down here. I thought there was a slab down here. Or maybe just those guys, the, uh, Chaos Eaters, I think, is what the community calls them. Maybe they can just drop slabs, and that's what I'm thinking about. Ah, nope, there it is. It was worth it. It was worth sticking around. Red Titanite Slab, all right. So that'll give us a max fire weapon or a max chaos weapon. And since we got one in the DLC as well, we can have a max fire weapon and a max chaos weapon. Now I'm just gonna homeward bone out of here. Because why the hell not? And to Firelink Shrine with us. Hey, Ziegmeier! Or not. That is not a Tvihinder. Siegland. Well, hello again. I have finally located my father. All of your help was invaluable to us. Thank you so much. I was finally able to pass on my mother's last word. She was searching for her father to pass on her mother's last word. So her mother is dead, and apparently her mother was not undead, I'm suspecting. Last words. She's dead. Dead dead. Dead for really dead. My father, as he went on his final adventure. Don't worry. That's just the way he is. Undead or no. Sort of reassuring, really. He goes hollow. I just have to kill him again. <laughs> and there... It seems as though she's killed him before. From her dialogue there. I'll just have to kill him again. Another thing in there, in that little dialogue. Human or, or undead or no, that's just the way he is. So he was, he acted like this even before he was undead. <laughs> She also knows that it's his final adventure. Fascinating. Let's see this out.
father all the hollow man. He's been subdued. He will cause no more trouble. It's finally over. I will return to Katerina. You assisted us most greatly. I can hardly return the favour, but please accept it. It's of no use to me now. She will return to Katarina. She's not an undead. She has nothing to gain here in Lordran. She can't link the fire. She can't become the Dark Lord. She's not undead. She's an incredible badass to have made this journey without, without fear of death, despite not being an undead. And to finally subdue her, her father, who, who is hollowed. His final adventure. He was finally able to be of use to you as a knight. Was it his wife's last words or knowledge of her death? Is that what caused him to finally hollow? I'm not sure. But. Rib Zeke, bro. Guys, I am Marcus, also known as EMB, and this has been From the Dark. I'll catch you next time. Let's do the thing.